All right, cool. So here is the turtle demo class um, that we all started with. Yours might very well look different because you made your turtle do more things than like what the original turtle did. That's totally fine. What we're going to do is we do some live coding together um, is to write some code together, but also to write some Java comments together. So basically, when it comes to note taking in this class, we don't take notes like in a notebook or a separate notebook. Rather, we embed our notes as comments within our code so that everything works out well together. Um, so that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna do today. So we're gonna start by writing a comment at the top of this file to explain a little bit about like how Java works and what a Java program is and what a Java class is. So we're gonna start defining some of the key terminology that we're gonna use throughout the year. All right, so let's give this a shot. In Java, um, there's a couple different types of comments. Um, we're going to start this Java comment with a slash. Um, actually, we'll just do it, yeah, slash and two stars. And then I'll hit enter, and BlueJay will automatically do some formatting here by adding additional stars um, and things like that. This is a Java block comment, meaning it starts with slash star, and it ends with star slash, and everything between the two of those is a comment that's going to be like not compiled as part of our program, but is for us and others to read. Okay? The slash star star means something special, which we'll get to later. For now, like, we're not going to write about that. Um, so let's actually talk. This is our very first Java program. So let's be clear like what a Java program is. Um, also, just to reassure you a couple of things, um, if as we're doing the live coding, you miss something that doesn't work, let me know and I will help you. Um, or you know, if, if you don't realize that till later, everything I type in class is gonna show up on my GitHub with that link I showed you yesterday. Okay? It's in our mock current module. In addition, um, I'm recording the screencast now as well, which I'll upload to the YouTube playlist, so you can always watch it later and listen to me later as well, too. Um, that's also advantageous for, for people who are, who are absent. So, um, all right, so every Java program contains one or more classes. For example, this class is called Turtle Demo. All of us have different backgrounds and experiences, but at the moment, probably the greatest shared experience, and this doesn't apply to all of you, I realize, is Python, because most of you have experience programming Python. So I will frequently make connections between Java and Python, because that's gonna help this all make more sense. Um, don't worry, if you're not familiar with Python, like this will still make sense. Um, it's just easier if you are. In Python, we can just start writing code, and we run it, and that's it. Right? You don't have to have a class in Python. In Java, everything, you have to have a class or you can't have a Java program. So one difference we're gonna see between Python and Java is just to get a program to do anything requires a lot more code in Java than it does in Python, okay? It's just part of the structure of the language. All right, so we have to have a class. This class is called Turtle Demo. Hit enter a couple times. In general, every source file, so this source file is called turtle demo.java. If you look in the finder on the Mac or in File Explorer on Windows, the actual name of the file with the extension is turtle demo.java. So in general, every source file contains one class. And the class name again here is turtle demo. So in general, there is a one-to-one -one relationship between a source file and a class. And the name of the source file has to be the same as the name of the class. BlueJay helps us out a little bit here. If we were to change the name of this class in this source file, BlueJay would 
automatically rename the file name as well for us. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, that's one of these nice advantages of Bluejay. Um, I always struggle as a teacher between presenting things at like the appropriate level of simplicity for where we are in the semester and like not lying to you at the same time. So often I'm going to phrase things like, in general, um, which means this isn't exactly true, but for like this semester, it's going to be just fine. And then we'll learn like it's a little bit more complicated next semester. Okay? So that's why if you're wondering like, why do I keep saying in general? Um, there are exceptions and we'll get to those exceptions. Most of them we're not going to get to until next semester. They're more advanced concepts. So in general, one-to-one -one relationship between source files and classes. Couple of rules, one which I just said, but let's write it down. The source file name must match the class name. Bluejay, make sure that happens. But if you explicitly go into File Explorer or the Finder and change the source file name, it won't even compile anymore. You won't be able to run it. The Java compiler is going to be like, sorry, this class is in a file of a different name. Right? So that's a rule that we have to follow. So there are rules that are enforced by the Java compiler or the Java runtime engine. Um, and I'll explain what those are and the differences between them later. Um, but there are also just conventions. A convention isn't really a rule. You don't have to follow it. A convention is something that we, um, as computer scientists, agree upon and expect. Um, and it makes it easier for us to work with each other. So here's our first convention. By convention, convention, class names start with an uppercase letter. These conventions are important because they give us syntax clues as to what things are. So for example, when we see a word in a program that starts with a capital letter, we can be like, oh, hey, I bet that's a class because it starts with a capital letter. That's really useful. That's an important syntax clue. Two other things that I put at the start of the file, and we'll go more into these details later, is I do an, the at symbol and author. And that's a tag that says like, hey, who's writing this file? And then I put my GitHub name. You can put your GitHub name there if you want. And then I also do at version, and I put the date of when I am actually typing this. Because that's helpful when I go back later. So you can do that too if you like. And we'll focus more on these tags at a later point. All right, so we've talked a little bit about a class name and a little bit about a file. A couple of conventions there. If you're following along, um, that's like what we did on this, this slide right here. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about stuff inside of the class. Oops, too far. So let's write another comment block. So here we have public class turtle demo. Um, you'll notice that the word class is like highlighted in red. Should be on yours as well. Um, things highlighted in red in blue day are like special Java reserved words. They have special meaning. Um, so class is definitely a special word because this is how we say, hey, here is the class for this file. It's called turtle demo. The public word just means that everybody's allowed to use this class. And we'll talk more about public and private stuff later. Um, but for now, public means everyone's welcome to use the turtle demo class. So let's focus on what's inside of the class. You'll notice we have some curly brackets here. The opening and closing curly bracket, they define the scope of the class. Here's where the class begins. Here's where the class ends. Everything related to the class has to be between those. And the first thing we see between those is this line of code that says public, static, void, main, and a bunch of other stuff. 
So let's do slash star enter to do another comment block. And let's talk about what's inside a class. So a class in Java, a class contains methods. That is really faint. Okay, I'm going to adjust the light a little bit. I'm going to adjust my colors so that it's easier to read my comments. They probably show up fine on your screen, but the contrast is uh, a little bit much here. I updated my Blue Jay version. I didn't go in and change the color, so I will do that for tomorrow. All right. Um, a class contains methods. Most Java programs contain a class with a main method. If you're running a Java program in a more traditional development environment, um, or if you're running a Java program from the command line or the terminal, um, you have to have a class with a main method. And it has to look just like the way we wrote ours. Um, BlueJay is a little bit more flexible. Again, it's an educational development environment, so we get to do some extra things that aren't normally available. But in general, most Java programs contain a class with a main method. What this, this main method is special because the main method is executed, meaning run, execu executed, um, when the program starts. So again, if we were to run this Java program from the command line or the terminal or in a more traditional development environment, we would just say run this program and it would find the main method and it would run that first. In BlueJay, it was a little different, right? Like what we had to do previously is we right clicked on the class and we chose that main method to run, right? So in BlueJay, we have to be explicit about what we want to run. That's actually a feature and we'll explore that more, more later. Cool. So a file contains a class. A class contains one or more methods. That's pretty cool. Um, let's talk about what's inside of the method. So we have this main method. Inside this main method, each of these lines of code we refer to as statements. So I'm going to add a comment block right here before the forward statement that I had in here. Um, it doesn't really matter, like, if you still have the forward, great. If not, just before some method, we're going to talk about a statement. So, a file contains a class, a class contains methods, methods, a method contains statements. Statements, like crush.forward, parenthesis 50, statements may invoke other methods. So we're inside the definition of the main method, but inside of here, we can call, we can invoke other methods. For example, in this case, the method we're invoking is forward. And we looked at the documentation previously with all these different methods that we could call on a turtle, all these different behaviors of turtles. In general, in general, methods are invoked on objects. Okay. So this is another big difference between Python and Java. In Python, you call lots of functions, and you just call the function, and things happen. In Java, in general, methods are invoked on objects. We can't just shout forward. We have to tell some specific turtle to go forward. Because what if we had a whole bunch of different turtles? Which one should go forward, right? So we got to tell Crush, hey, Crush, you, you go forward 50 steps. So in general, methods are invoked on objects. Um, and related to this, from a syntax perspective, when invoking a method, arguments are passed in parentheses. Uh, parentheses, there you go. 
So for example, 50 is what we're passing here. So forward is the name of the method. Crush is technically the variable that references the object that we're telling to move forward. We'll dive into that in more details later. The dot is basically the syntax that we use to say, tell crush to go forward, and the dot is what connects those two. And then often when we tell an object to do something, it needs more information. If we just told crush to go forward, I think by default it might go forward 100 steps. I can't remember. Um, but if we want to be more specific, we can say, actually, crush, go forward 50 steps. And so we can pass additional information about what we want to have happen inside a parentheses. And that's what the 50 is. All right, let's see, where are we at? Um, let's write a couple more things. We've been writing comments with the slash star, and that works great when we have multiple lines of comments. Sometimes our comments are much shorter, and we can use two forward slashes right next to each other, and then we can say this is a single line comment. It is like the pound symbol in Python, if that helps. Okay. So we can have single line comments as well. In general, it's easier just to go slash slash and have a single line comment, um, or just do slash slash and have a comment. So if it's only a single line, that's what we stick with. Um, the single line comment can also go after code. So after this crush.forward, I could say this is a comment at the end of a line. That's okay too. Okay, so two different ways we can we can put comments. All right. Let's do one more new piece of terminology and another rule. Um, and then we'll probably be at a good breaking point for today. So I'm going to do another slash star comment block. And we're going to, our new term, our final like term, is an identifier. What, an identifier means something specific. So identifiers, an identifier is a, is a special computer science term for basically a word. Um, in Java, there are some rules about identifiers. Different programming languages have different different rules. These rules are for identifiers in Java. So identifiers are any combination of, we can use letters. Okay, so our, our identifiers can have letters. That's good because they're usually words. We can have digits. We're allowed to put numbers in there too, with one exception, but not as the first character. So we can't start our identifier as a digit, with a digit. We can use underscores, okay? That's like, uh, like shift and the minus sign thing. That's where that is on the keyboard. We can use dollar signs. Um, I'll be honest, no one who programs in Java uses dollar signs. It's allowed, but I can't recall the last time I saw someone actually use a dollar sign. But it's allowed. So here's some examples. These are various identifiers. So I'm going to type int here because we're going to do some. Um, so an identifier is a general term for a word in a programming language. An identifier could be the name of a class. It could be the name of the method. It could be a name of a variable, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, it could be any of these things. Um, I'm going to use variables as an example here. And so I need to put this type in front of it. Don't worry, we'll get to that later. So here are some identifiers. The letter Y, that's an identifier. That works out great. I can also say X2. There's another identifier. I can say X underscore Y. 
That's a good identifier. I could do x dollar sign, although people are going to look at me funny because no one does that. Um, other identifiers that have already shown up in this program, crush is an identifier, forward is an identifier, pen down is an identifier, orange is an identifier, main is an identifier. All the way up here, turtle demo is an identifier. Okay? Basically, every word in this program is an identifier, and it has to follow these rules. If I don't follow these rules, and use like 2y, and I try to compile this by pressing the compile button up here, or doing control K on Windows or command K on the Mac, I get something not very helpful, which is Java is so confused because I'm not following the rules, it's just like, this isn't a statement. I don't know what you're trying to do, but it's, it's not. So I'm gonna comment that out, but make a little note above it saying, this is not a valid identifier. Just so we can both see what is a valid identifier and what is not a valid identifier. All right. Um, this is great. We're going to pause here for today.